They're probably not doing this on purpose, but... Car dealerships are undermining EV adoption. So let me back up here just a sec. Yesterday, on our way here, we stopped at the EV Go station in Pflugerville, and there was this there was this older couple with a brand new Mercedes Benz EQE SUV that uh, that they were waiting to charge because the charging station was full. I was going to be the first one to unplug, so she was lining up by where I'm at. Um, she had already done a public charge stop at an Electrify America and was already said that was a disaster because one of the charge stalls was broken. Yeah, Electrify America is like that. Their, their network is often just not well maintained or wasn't high quality in the first place and they're going to be broken a lot. You're always going to find a broken station at an Electrify America. It's just the way it is. Yeah. Uh, but she first thing that she was didn't understand was why she had to download another app to charge the car because she already had the Electrify America, but we were at EVgo and I was explaining that to her and, and all of that. And then and then I said, then you should put your, your credit card information in on the app. So I was just gonna, she just was just gonna swipe her credit card on the machine. Well, we were on one of the smaller 100 kilowatt machines. And of course the credit card reader didn't work on that one. That happens sometimes too. That happens too. frequently. And um, she didn't know that she had to confirm her account through email before she could put her credit card number in. The, the app was just bricked until she did that. After she got it going, because eventually the more powerful unit opened up and she was able to plug in and use her credit card on that one. Then when she was relaxed and sitting in the car, she was able to, to check her email. Oh, I've got to verify and then I can put my card number in. Mm -hmm. But all of that consternation, the husband, I'm assuming, mm. was getting very frustrated. Why did we buy an electric car? This is, I'm selling this thing. And she, she, they just barely had it. Mm. Loved, loved, the, loved the car, charging at home wasn't a problem, but they're not going out and about. She said that Mercedes was giving her credits with ChargePoint, but that wasn't working. And she didn't think that the dealership had set her up. And so that brings us to our point and the point of this video. Car dealerships, you're not helping. Yeah. Do your jobs. Um, that car is an expensive car and that couple liked it, but they simply were not well educated on how to use the car properly. It's not the same as a gas powered car when you go on a road trip and the dealerships need to be making sure that these buyers understand what they're buying. Car dealerships are basically treating these electric vehicles, which are new tech. Electric vehicles have been around for a long time, but mass market electric vehicles are within the last decade. Right. And car dealerships are treating these cars just like everything else on their lot. Mm -hmm. Take everybody, get them excited about the car, show them the features to get them excited about the car, work the numbers, sign the papers. Here's the keys. Thanks for your business and have a nice life. And that's just not a great idea for EV sales. Can't do that with an EV. There are people like us yeah. who, before we got our EV, watched a ton of YouTube videos from EV owners, EV um, analysts and journalists, and knew what to do before we got the first EV. Not a lot of people do that. I think the problem is that in the beginning, especially with Tesla, you know, with Tesla, like that was a completely different beast. And but when you have car dealerships that are selling EVs on their lots now, you had early adopters like us who did their research before they went to buy the car. And often like Luke always knows more about the car than the than the salesman does. And I think they got kind of used to that. But I shouldn't. Right, now they're at a point where they're trying to sell to people who are not early adopters, who don't necessarily know a lot about the technology, and they need to be educated, and they expect the dealership to have experts on site. The salesman should know what he's talking about. That's another problem. So first off, car dealers, you need to educate your buyers. Mm -hmm. We're past the early, adoptives, early adoption stage, and now we're getting at the people who are buying the car not getting a proper walk around, not getting a proper education on how to fuel the car up when they're on a long distance trip. They have an, a, an experience like this couple had yesterday and are already ready to trade the car in after they've had it for a month or two because they're frustrated with it and they're gonna tell everybody they know why they shouldn't buy an electric vehicle. 
because of the bad experience that they had. And that all could have been remedied with a decent walk around from an educated salesman who can educate the customer, especially when they're buying a $71,000 SUV. No kidding. If I'm buying a $71,000 SUV, I need to, I should leave, should not leave that lot until I know what every button on that vehicle does and how to fuel that car in any circumstance. How hard is it to say, these are the charge networks you can use. It's best to download those apps at home when you've got a good Wi-Fi signal and get your account set up there as opposed to doing it on the road because you, you're already dealing with stress when you're out on a road trip. Yeah, yeah. How am or, I going to have enough power to get to the next station or, or whatever? Absolutely. Or just refer them to resources even. If the salesperson isn't able to learn everything there is to know about the EVs on their lot because they have so many other cars, at least have a list of resources that you can refer them to and say, here's an article to read, here's a YouTube video to watch, here's how to find the owner's manual, what have you. This is where Tesla gets a lot of its loyalty mm -hmm. because the only things they sell are electric vehicles. And the cons customer service representatives that are there know, know those what they're vehicles talking about and are going to make sure that you know those vehicles and right. get you set up on those vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, or if they didn't, they should have. Yeah. And but they don't have to worry about selling a Volkswagen Atlas the same day as they're selling a Volkswagen ID4. Right. Um, so they don't they have that advantage. But there's a Volkswagen dealership that I drive by on my way home from work that a couple of months ago I noticed had two dozen ID4s lined up in a line for sale. And I it's went into the dealership <laughs> to try to find out why and ask them permission to get an interview and they wouldn't give it they wouldn't give it to me. They said they'd have to get it approved through Volkswagen. Right. Which um, means they don't know what they're talking they about. Want. But I went in and I asked the receptionist at the front, who is your EV specialist? And she looked at me like I had said something in a in a foreign language. Oh, well, they, they they all know about the car. And oh I go up, no, they don't. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they when I bought the Bolt, the guy was was just treating it like any other car. Um, when I went into that Volkswagen dealership again, I knew more about the car than than they did. Uh, and I said, well, how come you don't carry any of the all-wheel drives? Oh, people around here just don't want to mess with the range on that. It, the range loss. Okay, you lose so much more performance in the in the rear-wheel drive ID4 compared to the all-wheel drive. Isn't that a concern? Oh, no, that, it doesn't snow that much around here. No, 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 no. Acceleration, handling, ride. Behaves more like an EV, the all-wheel drive version does. The, the rear-wheel drive, they flat out, the Volkswagen wrap flat at Electrify Expo flat out told me they wanted it to behave like a nice car. Yeah, um, it, which is dumb. That's a completely different that's a subject. Different story, though, but... different topic. Anyway, but car dealerships have one person, at least one person, on your sales force that is an EV specialist who's going to do the homework, study the car, and help the person who's buying it out. Because a lot of people are just going to take that car, go on a three hundred mile road trip right out of the gate without even thinking that they have to plan where their charge stops are. We've and seen it happen more than once. I, the last three times yeah. we had to charge in the Austin area. We've seen yeah, that. people are just used to being able to go and they're used to a gas station being on every corner and you just have to s shift your mindset when you're road tripping with an EV. It is a completely different experience and it is a lot less convenient, that's for sure, but it's worth it you know, the trade-offs we think are worth it, but you definitely do have to do your homework and know what you're doing before you leave your house for a long road trip in an EV, for sure. The next thing that car dealerships need to uh, do to stop undermining EV adoption is hire more than one EV service technician or right. train more than one EV service technician. The Chevrolet dealership where we bought our Bolt has one EV technician. Right. So if, if there's a backup, if, if EVs are coming in for service or updates or recalls or anything like that, there's a wait. Mm -hmm. And I see this on forums for different types of EVs, the a wait time on getting these cars a fix for recalls or, or software updates or if something went wrong with the car mm -hmm. uh, is so long um, because the dealerships only have one or not enough EV service techs. Mm -hmm train your service techs. Mm -hmm. The EV adoption is coming and you're already behind the curve if you only have one service tech at your dealership to work on these cars. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, when I took the Bolton, the service tech looked at me and said, or looked at the paperwork, didn't really look at the car, looked at the paperwork and said, okay, are you here for an oil change? And I blinked at her for a couple of times before I'm like, well, it's an electric vehicle, so no. <laughs> she did a double take and then she started paying attention. Bolt Forum is full of posts showing how their dealership has sent them coupons for a free oil change. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, don't do anyway. that. <laughs> um, and then lastly, the big thing, how car dealerships are undermining um, EV adoption, and they're, they're kind of coming around on this, was the insane markups they were charging on new models when they came out, especially the, the F-150 Lightning in the summer of 2022. The markups on that it was crazy. Are the legendary. hype was crazy. Everybody wanted one because they were so affordable. And then they came out in limited quantities. They were really popular. Dealers marked the price up. And that was just, we've, we saw dealers really marking the price up ridiculous amounts. Then Ford said, hey, the dealers are getting this. Why don't we raise the prices? And by the time our number came around, the truck that I really wanted that kind of started this whole EV thing, I couldn't afford anymore. And so it's kind of pushed to the back Looks of like the we're not gonna get and one I know now. Enough yeah. about, I know enough about EVs now to know that It'd be good to, you know, if we, to, as a truck, mm -hmm. but not great on road trips because of how much it would need to charge. It's not that it charges slow, it's that the battery pack's so big because it's inefficient mm -hmm. on its miles per kilowatt hour. Another topic for another video. But now, <laughs> inventory is piling up. It's not because people are like, oh, nah, I don't like that car anymore. No, they were charging too much for it. And yeah. They scared everybody away. Right. People have a budget. We can only afford as much as we can afford. And if you raise the price too much, then you price us out and we can't afford it anymore. So the dealer markups really did not help out EV adoption. They didn't. And the flips, that was the thing that was really outrageous on right. the Lightning, was people trying to flip them. Mm -hmm. Used car dealerships buying Lightnings right out of the get-go and then trying to flip them. There is one car dealership near where we live that bought a F-150 Lightning Platinum. It was one of the first ones that I saw in person uh, just driving past the dealership. Now this is a 95, 96, uh, some more money than I can afford thousand dollar truck. Right. And the dude had it marked up to $160,000. That was like a, what, a 40% markup? That was in July of 2022. It is November, end of November. By the time this video comes up, it goes, goes live, it'll be December of 2023. Mm -hmm. He still has it. It's still sitting on his lot. It's marked down to $91,000. That's below the MSRP. He's losing money at that offering price now. Yeah, just try to contain your greed if a little bit. If you're a dealership, try not to be so greedy and evil. If he marked it up five, maybe even $10,000 in July He probably could have got it. He'd have sold it right away. But he no, he marked it up fifty-five dollars or $60,000 to try to really cash in big and now he's stuck with it. Yep, don't and do that, don't don't be evil, please. Car dealers, help us out. Yeah. This is, and again, it goes back to this is why, one of the main reasons why Tesla is so popular. Their uh, charge network is- Second to none. Second to none on any road trip. Mm -hmm. And the car buying experience of so point click, much go better. sign, pick up and you're done is kicking dealers butts. Absolutely, and the and the salespeople know, I mean, the service, I guess they're not salespeople, but the, the, the people that you talk to when you go to test drive a car know the car. Now, they I've can answer some, your questions. I've heard some horror stories about service technicians at Tesla service centers, but. I yeah, don't know about uh, that. So. We don't uh, have first-hand experience Well, I've got second-hand experience with that, because yeah. from uh, our friend Bob, who was gonna loan us his Model 3, mm -hmm. uh, so there's one service center, the closest one to him, he doesn't go to, because every time he takes his Model X there, something comes back broken that wasn't broken before. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> so he drives, he drives all the way to Dallas, he drives an extra 40 miles to service his Tesla. Because so it seems like it's worth it to send some of your mechanics to to school to learn how to service these EVs and to get a reputation for being good at it. Because people will drive a long way if they've got, you know, if they can trust their mechanic. Now I have no idea how long uh, we've been we've been talking, but uh, those are just, we had this very animated conversation after we <laughs> left Pflugerville yesterday on our, on our vacation trip and thought, you know, this, this just needs to be, this is a video right here in and of itself. Car dealers, stop it.
<laughs> get you your crap want, together, you please. You want to sell these things. You're trying to sell these things. The manufacturers want you to sell these things. They're and the customers want you. them. Customers, the customers want, want them. them. But if you just do a couple of things, take five more minutes at the delivery of the vehicle to explain how public charging works. Uh, Learn about the vehicles. Make sure your salespeople are, you have dedicated salespeople who know about EVs that don't have to spend a lot of time learning about your other cars. Yeah, make your salespeople watch an hour or two of videos to get trained. Mm -hmm. And, you know, send a couple more service techs away for training. Mm -hmm. That's all it takes, guys. Yeah. That it might cost a little bit of money to, to train the service tech. So worth it. If you but, get a reputation for being the place that takes care of your EV customers, it's going to make a difference. It'll if, be worth it. If you know of any car dealerships that actually do the things that we're begging car dealerships to talk to that are not Tesla service centers, that are that are legacy automaker dealerships, old school car dealerships that are actually doing the things we're asking them to do, let us know and we'll give them some credit. Uh, let us know in the comments or if you have any other dealership horror stories you want to tell us about, <laughs> put them in the comments too. Yeah, we want to hear that too. We'll, we want to hear about that. If if you like our video, give us a like, uh, subscribe for some more content. You'll find our socials down in the description. Thanks.